迎 AMB 全球副总裁兼大中华区总裁潘晓明先生来为我们致辞。嗨，各位朋友们，大家早上好 ，Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of AMD Greater China, I'm pleased to welcome everyone here at Computex Taipei.、Uh, as we all know, Computex is one of the largest computer and technology show in the world. So, as a leading company in the industry, AMD really recognizes and values the Computex great impact and influence. So that's why we hold global press conference here today. To share the latest technologies with everyone in the world. So today we are going to introduce the exciting details of a lot of the 2016 AMD products that will be including、uh, the launch of the seventh generation of A series CPU, and also we'll talk about how our innovations will support our partners to develop. The high-level computing experience for the consumers, and、uh, in the meantime, and I think everyone has a great opportunity to experience immersive VR demos powered by AMD latest technology. So now it's the greatest pleasure today. I, I would like to introduce Dr. Lisa Su, President and the CEO of of our AMD, to speak on the focus strategy and AMD innovations. To which we all of us. So, let's join me to welcome Lisa to the stage. Welcome. Good morning, Taipei. 大家好 For those of you on our webcast, we have standing room only here in Taipei. And we are extremely excited to be here today to talk to you about our 2016 products. If you think about Computex, it really is the center of the universe when we talk about PCs, gaming, new technologies, and it's where all of the partners in the ecosystem come together. So we have a great program for you today. It has been a wonderful year start for AMD, and we really view it as just the beginning of what we have to come. So today we're going to talk about a number of things. Our mission in our company is really about building great products. We are engineers. We are innovators. We are about leading edge technology. And if you look at our history, we've always brought out those products that changed the industry, starting with the world's first 64-bit x86 architecture, going to the world's first integrated high-performance CPU and GPU into APUs. If you like game consoles today, practically every game console you buy has an AMD APU in it. Over 50 million units already sold in this generation. And last year, we introduced, actually at Computex, we showed our first high bandwidth memory graphics chip, and again, another first in the industry. Now, as we think about what is AMD about, it's about leadership in technology, plain and simple. It's leadership, 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 and we're going to talk about what we're doing in terms of graphics leadership, and the architectures that we are investing in, the software, the APIs, the partnerships with the industries, and we're going to talk about our computing leadership and what we're doing in terms of scalable architectures, working with the rich OEM and DIY ecosystems to bring platform solutions and software to the market. And the point of all of this investment in leadership technologies is truly to bring out great products that deliver and change the experience for the user going forward. It is about delivering true immersive experiences. It is about changing the way we interact with computing. Everything is about immersive, interactive, really trying to deliver a true different experience. And today we're going to share with you many different technologies that do that. One of the very, very important things for me has been to bring focus to AMD. So nine months ago, we formed the Radeon Technologies Group, and the Radeon Technologies Group has one goal in life, which is to lead the graphics industry for the next ten years. And we're going to talk about how we're going to drive the VR ecosystem and what we can do to partner with the ecosystem to bring it forward. And we're partnering with a number of different people in the ecosystem on the software side, on the hardware side, 
certainly with Microsoft on DirectX 12 and the ecosystem on Vulkan. These are just some examples of our commitment to bringing the ecosystem together. And we're also going to talk about our seventh generation APUs and how that really expands our computing roadmap, going from consumer to commercial, working with the key OEMs as well as the channel partners. And all of this is about strong product execution. So I know all of you want to get to the products, and we should get to the products. So today at Computex, we're going to talk about our Polaris architecture and what we are able to deliver across Polaris going forward. We're also going to talk about our seventh generation mobile APUs that we're launching today here at Computex. And then I'm going to come back and talk a little bit about our future technologies. So with that, let me introduce our senior vice president and uh, chief architect of the Radeon Technologies Group, Raja Kadori. Thank you. Uh, welcome, 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 uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends in the audience, friends on the world cast, and uh, everyone watching uh, the show here. We formed the Radeon Technology Group about nine months ago. Uh, one of the first uh, discussions I had with Lisa, the first challenge uh, Lisa gave me was, we are leaders on the console graphics. In game consoles, AMD is number one. The challenge she gave me was, how can we gain market share in PC graphics? Let's do something disruptive for PC gaming. And that was music to my ears. As many of you know, PC gaming and PC hardware is a passion of mine. So when we formed the Radeon Technology Group, we formed it on three principles. And I have those listed here. Passion, persistence, and play which were actually inspired very much by a PC gamer. You know, if you look at the PC gamer today, they are very passionate about their hardware. There is no other gamer that's as passionate about the details of the hardware, what is in their system, performance, power, specs, than the PC gamer. They are also very persistent. They take new technologies that are initially very, very hard, adopt, and grow. They're not afraid to download drivers every day. That's the PC gamer, they're very persistent bunch. And they're also fun, they play. And we formed Radeon Technology Groups with these three principles, that we are going to be passionate, persistent, and make it fun about all gaming. And what you're going to see today is what we're doing with PC gaming, our vision for PC gaming, and the set of products that we have coming this year that are going to be very, very disruptive to PC gaming. So what's our vision for PC gaming? It's actually simple, but ambitious at the same time. We wanted to make the next 250 million gamers PC gamers. We also wanted to make bringing content to the PC very efficient and very cost effective. We wanted the leverage of content from game consoles to the PC. And we also wanted to deliver VR for the first 100 million consumers. That's simply the vision that we have for PC gaming. And what I'm going to talk about today is what are we doing? What is our first step to that? And uh, the first challenge we took was, how do we bring real VR to the first 100 million consumers? I'd like to break the problems into what it is that we want to do. The, the, the next thing you need to understand is why. Why did we want to solve this problem? So imagine a world where tens of millions of consumers can only read about incredible PC VR experiences, but can't enjoy them for themselves. Why is that? Because only 1% of the 1.43 billion PCs out there can do VR today. And why is that? Majority of the gamers buy graphics between 100 to 300 dollars. And there are no VR experiences available in that price range today. 
And if you look at what the founder of modern VR, Amar Lucky, posted last year on Twitter, VR will become something everyone wants before it becomes something everyone can afford, which was an inspiration for us. And if you look at some of the recent surveys, 68% of the users say the equipment for VR is too expensive. That's the world we live in today. We have consumers and gamers being left behind. We want VR everywhere. VR should be everywhere. And it should be for everyone. How do we make that happen? We want VR to get to the first 100 million consumers in the next few years. And we want to start that now. Not six months from now, not next year. We want the wide accessibility for VR now. So that's the goals we had for the Polaris architecture. And another goal we had beyond consumers is that without content, without amazing VR content, the VR hardware is not very useful. So we need to make the VR application development, VR content development much more easier and much less expensive. So that was also another goal we had with the Polaris architecture. So we wanted to deliver a high performance, low cost, low power solution to democratize VR, which can make VR possible for anyone who wants it. It can drive VR into retail, it can hit system price points, PC price points that can be everywhere in retail. And it can grow the market to over 100 million consumers. And also drive VR application development, content development in a large scale fashion. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm really, really, really proud to announce the passion, persistent play of the Radeon Technology Group. We have a product that just does that. And without further ado, this is the Radeon RX 480 that delivers VR to the masses. And the best thing about it is premium VR starting at $199. And this car, this car is beautifully built. It actually is built like a $500 premium car. If you look at the, the design of it, the thermal solution of it, the, the airflow of it are all designed as a really, really expensive high-end car. You can see these designs in our premium cars from the last generation. So we brought a premium design, the premium quality experience to affordable price ranges. So that is ready on RX480. Like I mentioned, the PC gaming community loves, are passionate about their hardware. They'd like to know more. They'd like to know what's inside it. So what's inside an RX480? We have over five teraflops of computing in this beautiful car. And we chose the computing and the bandwidth and the specification of the card based on what the content developers are going to tune for over the next three to four years. So we didn't make it a card that is just for this year. This is a card for the next three to four years with our deep understanding of the content pipeline, what, what is coming. It also has advanced display technologies. It has the HDR support, it's the first display card with 1.4 HDR specification. It is the GPU for the immersive era. And beyond the specification, it is also our most power efficient GPU ever. It's up to 2.8x performance per watt improvement over our prior generation. It's enabled by both the FinFET technology that we work with and also architectural improvements. Amazing, amazing performance improvement. So wait, I spoke about VR, but what about gaming? Radeon RX series also delivers 
powerful gaming. As you all know, we have been pioneering gaming APIs. We have invested in Mantle, which inspired DirectX 12, which gave birth to Volcom. And we also made a revolutionary initiative called GPU Open. Why? Remember the goal of bringing the console class gaming to the PC? That's what we have done. We started this investment several years ago and they are paying off. Hardware is only half the story about PC gaming. Software is more than half the story and that software investments we made several years ago are paying off. It's amazing to see the, the kind of D D DirectX 12 performance on, on these cards. You'll also see today some really, really interesting work in performance. Along with DX12 and Welcome, we also have the AMD FreeSync, deliver smooth frame rates. The asynchronous compute feature of the GCN architecture. We have more and more titles taking advantage of this feature and delivering substantial frame rate advantage or, or our competition. And we also have premium multi-GPU support. And you'll see more coming in our multi-GPU support rest of the year. So this card is designed to run premium gaming experiences like Battlefield 1 that you're watching in the back. So wait. This is a season for Doom, right? So no um, video card launch can be complete without something about Doom. So let's um, watch what the developers of the Doom software, the Doom game, have to say about Polaris. Person. But we're back here today working on a number of updates for Doom, and specifically Doom running on Vulkan. Vulkan is a modern API with roots in AMD's Mantle technology, and it provides real benefits to both us as developers and the large community of gamers using a wide range of hardware. For us, we can run much closer to the metal, which directly translates to speed. Speed is king, and we anticipate this breathing new life into older graphics cards already in the market, as well as providing 200 frames per second plus on modern high-end cards. Where this really starts to shine is with a new chipset like Polaris. Polaris is affordable, has ultra-low power consumption, and runs Doom very fast. Gamers can look forward to a buttery smooth experience in Doom on Polaris, supporting a wide range of hardware and gamer budgets. Want to play Doom on your laptop on the train home? Polaris plus Vulkan is going to make that possible. When you factor in additional AMD features like true asynchronous compute, custom intrinsic instructions, and combine those with the raw speed of Intex 6, we believe the experience on AMD will be hard to beat across all hardware. These features are currently exclusive to AMD chipsets, and combined with what we've already done in Vulkan, will bring performance to an even higher level across a wide range of hardware. We are also hard at work on HDR support in Intex 6. We don't quite have anything to show yet, but we expect Doom to look fantastic in HDR on AMD. Bottom line is, you're not going to need a $700 video card to enjoy Doom at fantastic frame rates. going to need a $700 graphics card to enjoy Doom. And you have heard many interesting things from the developers. Exclusive features only available on players. A synchronous computer. Shader intrinsics. This is the promise of bringing the console quality performance, console, console quality features onto the PC. Amazing, amazing, amazing what they have done with a very power efficient and a very affordable solution. Now, I know many of you have this question, but what else can you do with a $700 solution? There are $700 solutions out there, some of which have been recently launched. You know, if you can play Doom for $200, what do you do for $700? I mean, you know, graphics is amazing. There is always something more to do. So we looked at what, what, what can you do for a $700 solution, right, with uh, some of the content available today. You know, you can play some premium VR. Actually, let's play, let's show 
Switch to the video, cut to the video before I get to the numbers. Cut to the video. Actually, it's not the video, by the way. These are live cards running. Two systems. One system is $700. I'll tell you what the other system price is in a second. Both running a premium DX12 experience, Ashes of Singularity. And uh, the one on the right is the $700 solution. Okay? And the one on the left is something much better. I'll tell you what it is in a second. As you can see, both kind of, you know, sort of seem to deliver, you know, similar performance. You know, maybe if you're some of the people with really crazy eyes who can spot millisecond differences on, 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 on screen, maybe you'll be able to figure, it, figure out the precise frame rates. So let's see actually what, what frame rates these, these things are running and uh, what uh, performance they're delivering. So, you have the $700 solution delivering 58.7 FPS. You can call it kind of reasonably smooth, 60 FPS, close to 60 FPS. And we have a dual 480 delivering 62.5 frames per second, but that's not the story. The story is the dual 480 costs below $500. And that's not even the half of the story because the dual 480 is actually only being utilized 51%. It has more headroom versus the $700 solution which is sweating at 98.7% fully occupied. So we have much, much more headroom as the developer tunes for the new APIs and as we tune the drivers for the new Polaris GPU. So that brings to conclusion my Polaris unveil today. And Polaris architecture is a giant, giant step forward for PC gaming and VR. And what um, we have revealed to you today is its capability in, uh, in VR and its, uh, and its price points. You will see a lot more information about the entire Polaris GPU stack coming out in the next, over the next few weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And also, I want to thank all of the engineers who worked on Polaris tirelessly over the last two years to get us to this day. Thank you.